I am making an updated Red Dragon Archfiend deck profile for post Battles of Legend Terminal Revenge. As there were two, possibly three, I, I don't really know, new cards in, in the set for Red Dragon Archfiend. One is specific, the other one not so much. But I figured I'd go ahead and make an updated video for it. So starting off with the monsters, I played two copies of Synchron Resonator. Synchron Resonator has the effect that there's a Synchro Monster in play, you can special summon it. And if it goes from your field to your graveyard, you can target a Synchron or Synchron, a Resonator monster in your graveyard except for a Synchron Resonator and add it to your hand. And then next I play two copies of Vision Resonator. I'm trying two copies of Vision Resonator, although I am thinking about playing two copies of Red Resonator instead. But Vision Resonator has the effect that if there's a level 5 or higher dark monster on the field, you can special summon it. And then if Vision Resonator is sent to the graveyard, you can add a spell or trap from your deck to your hand that mentions a Red Dragon Archfiend. And, and you can only use each effect of Vision Resonator once per turn. Next, I play one copy of Red Resonator. Red Resonator has the effect that when it's normal summoned, you can special summon a level 4 or lower monster from your hand. And then if it's special summoned, you can target a mon one monster on the field. I believe it has to be a special summon monster. Nope, you just target one monster on the field and gain life points equal to its attack points. However, you can only use one of those two effects per turn and only once that turn, which I believe that's how it's... It's... I was wrong. Ignore that last part. Each effect is once per turn. I remember at one point I thought that's how it worked, but it, it doesn't. You can normal summon it, bring it back, gain life points. I'm just dumb. Ignore that part. Anyway, I also play one copy of Crimson Resonator. Crimson Resonator has the effect that if you control no monsters, you can special summon it. And then, if it's special summoned while the only other monster you control is a Dark Dragon Synchro monster, then you can activate Crimson Resonator's effect to special summon two Resonator monsters from your deck with different names. And you can only use each effect of Crimson Resonator once per turn. And if you use any of the effects of Crimson Resonator, you cannot special summon from the extra deck except for Dark Dragon Synchro Monsters. Which with this deck isn't an issue because every monster in the extra deck is a Dark Dragon Synchro. And then next I play three copies of Soul Resonator to finish off the Resonators that I play. Soul Resonator has the effect that if it's normal or special summoned, you can add a level 4 lower fiend monster from your deck to your hand. Which, one card I actually side in this deck, it, just for decks like Snake Eye, is uh, Skullmeister, which Soul Resonator can technically add from the deck. But Soul Resonator has the, another effect where if it's in the graveyard and you control a Red Dragon Archfiend, if any of your cards are, if any of your cards will be destroyed by a battle or card effect, you can banish this card from your graveyard instead. And you can only use each effect of Soul Resonator once per turn. And then I play three copies of the new Red Lotus King Flame Crime. Flame Crime has the effect that during your main phase, if you control a Fiend Tuner or your opponent controls a monster, or, or controls a special summon monster, quick effect, you can special summon this card. Let's see, special summon from your hand, and then this card is normal. Or special summon, you can inflict 400 damage to your opponent for each fire monster that you control with, with a different, you know, different names. I don't know why my brain is just not wanting to work. You, if it's normal special summon, you just inflict 400 damage per different fire monster you control. And it also has the effect that if this card is sent to the graveyard as synchro material, you can send a normal trap from your deck to the graveyard. And you only use each effect of Red Lotus King Flame Crime once per turn. Flame Crime is amazing in this deck just because it actually lets you use one of the most broken Red Dragon Archfiend cards. But the only reason it wasn't being used before is because you couldn't search it. And most people don't want to put have three spots in a deck just to that one card that can be recycled. But the other thing with Flame Crime is that it is a, technically a burn card, so you can technically win games in time because of it. Just have a bunch of fire monsters in play, and then... Oh look, a Flame King! Just inflict 
like 800 or 1200 points of damage. It's fine. Next, I play one copy of Obsessive Uvaloop. Obsessive Uvaloop has the effect that if it's in your hand, you can target a synchro monster that you control or in your graveyard and banish it. So then special summon it. And then if this card's in your graveyard, you can target a synchro monster you control in your graveyard, banish it, and if you do, add this card to your hand. And you can only use each effect of Obsessive Uvaloop once per turn. This is mainly just used because you can banish your copies of Red Rising Dragon from the graveyard to either summon this or add it back to your hand. And then because you're banishing Red Rising Dragons, you can also do other things with other cards like uh, Red Rain and Bestial Dispater. Next, I play one copy of Bone Archfiend. Bone Archfiend has the effect that if it's in your hand or graveyard, you can send a card from your hand to the graveyard to then be able to special summon it. One thing I should mention though is you cannot just discard a bo Bone Archfiend to then summon the exact same Bone Archfiend. <laughs> and the Bone Archfiend has another effect where you can send a Resonator from your deck to the graveyard to then target a monster you control and either increase or decrease its level by one. And I believe if you use that effect, you're locked into Dark Dragon Synchros. Okay, now, the effect that locks you into Dark Dragon Synchros with this card is its effect to summon itself. And then next, I play three copies of Earthbound Prisoner Stone Sweeper. Stone Sweeper is in this deck just because you can discard it to add a, what was it, level 3 or lower tuner? You add a level 3 or lower fiend tuner from your deck to your hand. And then the part that comes up every once in a while, just because a lot of decks are needing their field are needing field spells, is that if there's a field spell in play, you can special on this card from your hand. And if you have a negated soul resonator, that gives you access to level A synchros. And then flame I know it's a little late for it, but Flame Crime is also great in this deck because if Soul Resonator gets negated, you can special summon it and still be able to make a decent board. And then next I play one copy of Bestial Magmut. Bestial Magmut has the effect that when it's special summoned, you can, at the end of the turn, add a dragon monster from your deck to your hand. And then, like all the level six Bestials, if you, you can target a, dark monster, a light or dark monster in either player's graveyard, banish it, and then this is a quick effect if your opponent controls a monster. I'll be skipping that part for the rest of the level 6 bestials. I also play one copy of Druus Worm. Druus Worm has the effect that when it leaves the field, you can target one special summon monster your opponent controls. Or I said, believe SP a special summon monster. It might just be target one monster. Yeah, target a special summon monster your opponent controls, send it to grave. And then I play three copies of Bestial Serenir. Serenir has the effect that if it's sent to the graveyard, you can send a bestial or branded continuous spell or trap, or continuous spell or trap. You send a bestial or a branded spell or trap from your deck to the graveyard. And then next, I play three copies of the bestial Lubellion. Lubellion has the effect that it cannot be normal summoner set, has to be special summoned from your hand or graveyard by beating a level six or higher dragon monster. Except for the Bestial Lubellion. And then, you can Lubellion also has the effect you can discard it to then add any Bestial from your deck to your hand. That is, I believe, has to be a specific level. You add a level 6, no, by attributing a level 6 or higher Dark Dragon Monster. Let's see. Okay, yeah, it just lets you add a, any Bestial from your deck to your hand except for another Lubellion. And then... Lubellion's last effect is once per turn during your main phase. You can activate its effect to take a branded continuous spell or trap from your deck and place it face up in your spell and trap zone. And there's actually a two card combo that acquires the Beast Fuel Lubellion and then any of the, like, uh, let's see, it was Stone Sweeper, Resonator Call, Soul Resonator, or Crimson Gaia. Any of those four plus Lubellion is the two card combo that gives you a King Calamity on your opponent's turn. 
Anyway, for these spells, I play one copy of Scarlet Security. Scarlet Security is a Harpy's Feather Duster while you control a Red Dragon Archfiend, as it can only be activated while you control a Red Dragon Archfiend. But the thing I like about this, well, I'll get to it when I get to Crimson Gaia. Next, I also play one copy of Branded Regained. Branded Regained has the effect that if your opponent normal or special summons a monster, as a soft once per turn effect, meaning if you have multiple Branded Regains, you can use that effect multiple times per or once per copy. You can special summon a bestial monster that is in your hand or graveyard. And though also once per turn, if a light or dark monster is banished, you can target that banished card, shuffle it back into the owner's deck, and then you get to draw one card. And you can only use that effect of Brandy Regained once per turn. Next, I play two copies of Synchro Creed. When I first saw this card, I was did a generic Yu-Gi-Oh player and could not read, and I thought its name was Synchro Greed, which made, made sense. But anyway, it has the effect that if there's a Synchro monster on the field, you can draw a card. And there's there are more Synchro monsters, you can draw one more card. You can only activate one Synchro Creed once per turn. The only reason I'm playing this is because I thought it would be a good idea to have, be playing a Pot of Greed in a deck that can easily make a bunch of Synchro monsters. If you don't want to play Synchro Creed, you can always just play something like, uh, oh, what was it called? Triple Tactics Talent, so you can draw, just draw two cards. And then next, I play three copies of Crimson Gaia. Crimson Gaia has the effect that during your main phase, you can add one Red Dragon Archfiend or a card that mentions it from your deck or graveyard to your hand. So off of that, that already tells you why I like Scarlet Security is because it's a searchable and recyclable fe uh, Harpy's Feather Duster. And then it also has the effect that when your Red Dragon Archfiend declares an attack, you can change all monsters your opponent controls to defense position. That is meant for the original Red Dragon Archfiend, and I will get to that later. And then it also has the effect that if a monster or monsters on the field are destroyed, while er, destroy a battle or card effect, you can special summon one Red Dragon Archfiend from your graveyard. And you can only use each effect of Crimson Gaia once per turn. This card is a one card starter, just like those other four cards I meant, or the other three cards I mentioned for the two card combo, including Lebellion. And then next, I play three copies of Resonator Call. This is just a lets you add a resonator from your deck to your hand. Very simple. And again, it's a one card starter. For the traps, I play one copy of Red Zone. Red Zone has the effect that when your opponent act Activates a card or effect while you control a Red Dragon Archfiend monster, or yeah, while you, or a mo while you control Red Dragon Archfiend or a monster that mentions it. That's what it was. Then you can target one card in the field and destroy it. And then its other effect is that once per turn you can target a banished Dark Dragon Synchro monster and special summon it. You can only use each effect at Red Zone once per turn. Next, I play one copy of Crimson Fire. Crimson Fire is a card I only main because I think it's funny. But Crimson Fire has the effect that if you would take effect damage while you control Red Dragon Archfiend, then you take your opponent will take double the damage you would have taken from that effect. So if Red Dragon Archfiend attacks to a magic cylinder, you can activate Crimson Fire so that your opponent will take 6,000 instead of you taking 3,000. It's also a funny card to have in time when your opponent's trying to just burn you for a game. And then I play one copy of Red Rain. Red Rain has the effect that if you control level 8 or higher Synchro Monster, you can banish all monsters on the field except for the monster at the highest level. And then if it's a tie, then you choose. And then the, uh, the monster that gets left behind has, gains the effect that's unaffected by other cards affects that turn. And then if you synchro summon, I believe it has to be... If a Dark Dragon synchro monster is synchro summoned while its cards in your graveyard, you can add this card back to your hand. Which, F Flame Crime is part of the reason why this is good, because you just send us to grave. You synchro summon using Flame Crime. And then, or you summon Red Rising Dragon. Red, Flame Prime sends this. Red Rising brings back your Soul Resonator. You make a... Uh, what was its name? You make an Abyss, and then this returns your hand, so you have a, an Abyss, 
or so you have a ne- one target negation, and then you have a mass board banish except for Abyss, unless your opponent summons a monster that's higher than level nine. And for the branded traps, I play one copy of a two of the branded, and one copy of branded beast. A two of the branded is the trap that lets you uh, King Calamity lock your opponent in this deck, as has the effect that during your opponent's turn you can. See you can activate its effect to synchro summon a dragon synchro monster using monsters you control, including a dragon. And it just so happens that a lot of the higher level synchro monsters in this deck require a dark dragon synchro. And it also has the effect that while it's in play, any of your opponent's monsters that are used for fusion, synchro, link, or ritual summons are removed from play. And I believe that's it. And then Brand of Beast has the effect that once per turn during your main phase, or during the main phase, if you control a bestial monster, you can tribute a dragon monster you control, target one card your opponent controls, and then destroy that target. And then during the end phase, you can target a branded continuous spell or trap in your graveyard and place it face up on your in your spell and trap zone. And that is it for the main deck. The main deck is, this time, actually is a 40-card deck. Because usually, if I make a deck, it's usually a 42-card deck. For the extra deck, I play three copies of Red Rising Dragon. Red Rising Dragon has the effect that when it's synchro summoned, you can target a one Resonator monster in your graveyard and special summon it. And then you can banish this card from your graveyard to then tar- special summon two level 1 tuner monsters from your graveyard. And you can only use each effect of Red Rising Dragon once per turn. Uh, you can only use that effect of Red Rising Dragon once per turn. Its effect on summon is not on once per turn, which I think is hilarious. Because technically if you wanted to, you can summon all three Red Rising Dragons in one turn. And then next I play one copy of Hot Red Dragon Archfiend. I'm honestly thinking about taking Hot Red Dragon Archfiend out of the deck for Quee Belt the Blade Dragon. Just because there are times where you can actually make a level 7 synchro, which level 7 dark dragons, level 7 dark dragon synchro monsters, I believe there's only two at the moment. But Queen Belt is just a decent one as when it's summoned, destroy a card. And when it's destroyed, destroy a card. But anyway, Hot Red Dragon Archfiend just has the effect that once per turn you can activate its effect, destroy all other attack position monsters on the field. And then Hot Red Dragon Archfiend is the only monster you can, that's allowed to attack that turn. Next, I play one copy of Scarred Dragon Archfiend. Scarred Dragon Archfiend has the effect that its name becomes Red Dragon Archfiend while it's on the field or on the graveyard. And then if it leaves the field, you can activate its effect to summon a Red Dragon Archfiend. And if it left the field for a Synchro Summon, then you can also destroy all attack position monsters your opponent controls. And you can only use each effect of Scarred Dragon Archfiend once per turn. Next, I play one copy of Red Dragon Archfiend. Red Dragon Archfiend has the effect that if it attacks a defense position monster your opponent controls, you destroy all defense monsters your opponent controls. That's the reason why uh, Crimson Gaia has the effect when Red Dragon Archfiend attacks, you switch everything to defense. And then during your end phase, the Red Dragon Archfiend has the mandatory effect of destroying all your monsters that did not attack. Which that's probably the reason why Soul Resonator has its Grave Effect. Which, fun fact, Soul Resonator's Grave Effect doesn't actually activate. Next, I play three copies of Scarlight Red Dragon Archfiend. This is going to be the main Red Dragon Archfiend that you'll be summoning a lot. As Scarlight Red Dragon Archfiend has the effect that its name becomes Red Dragon Archfiend while it's on the field or in the graveyard. And then once per turn, you activate its effect to destroy all special summon effect monsters on the field that have attack points less than its own and then inflict 500 points of damage to your opponent for each one destroyed. The fun part of that is that it is a soft once per turn, so if you can keep summoning it back over and over again, you can just keep doing it. Which I think is fun for decks that have a bunch of monsters that just float. Next, I play one copy of Hot Red Dragon Archine Abyss. Abyss, I was honestly thinking about playing a second copy of just because Flame Crime makes summoning it really easy. But Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss has the effect that once per turn, quick effect, you can target one card on the field and negate its effects. 
And then if Abyss inflicts battle damage, you can target one tuner monster in graveyard and special summon it in defense mode. You'll use each effect of Hot Red Dragon Archie and Abyss once per turn. That's the only reason I'm only playing one at the moment is because Hot Red Dragon Archie and Abyss is technically a hard once per turn negation. And then I play one copy of Bestial Dispater. Dispater has the effect that once per turn, you can target a banished light or dark monster and special summon it to your field. One thing I did not realize with this card when I was first started using it is that you can actually target your opponent's banished light or dark monsters to summon. And then when your opponent activates a monster effect, you can target a banished, a banished card, shuffle it into the owner's deck, and if it was shuffled into your deck, destroy that monster, or if it was shuffled into your opponent's deck, negate that monster's effect. Next, I play one copy of Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Bane. Whoops. Bane has the effect that once per turn, you contribute one monster, target a Red Dragon Archfiend monster in your graveyard, special summon it. And then when this card inflicts battle damage to your opponent, you can special summon two 200 monsters with different levels, or with different levels, with different names, but the same level. Okay, I'm, I'm, my brain's not wanting to work. It's two tuners with the same level, one from your graveyard, one from your deck. And you can use each effect of Hot Red Dragon Archie and Bane once per turn. I don't know why my brain's not wanting to work. Next, I play one copy of Tyrant Red Dragon Archfiend. Tyrant Red Dragon Archfiend has the effect that it must be Synchro Summon, it cannot be Special Summoned by other ways. And then during the main, during your main phase one, you can destroy all other cards on the field, except this card. And then if your opponent activates a, who was it, a, when your opponent activates a spell or trap card during the battle phase, you can negate that, that activated spell or trap, and if you do, de negate, destroy, and then it gains 500 attack. That effect I've never seen played at all, because usually it's destroying all spells and traps on the field. So that's hardly ever actually played. Although this card is really funny when you build a massive board and you have a soul resonator in your graveyard. Because you can activate Tyrant Red Dragon Archfiend's effect, use the soul resonator to save your cards, and you just board wipe your opponent. And you have a bunch of monsters that can probably OTK them. Next, I play one copy of Red Supernova Dragon. Red Supernova Dragon, I personally hardly ever actually summon. I think I've always summoned it once or twice. But Red Supernova Dragon has the effect that it must first be special summoned, and then gains 500 attack for, in, for every 200 monster in your graveyard. When your opponent activates a monster effect or declares an attack, you can activate Red Supernova Dragon's effect to banish all cards they control. And then it, and then it returns to your field at the end of your next turn. But, but this card is actually really funny because... You can activate its effect, banish your opponent's entire board, red zone can bring it right back. And then technically, if you're playing, uh, what was it, Assault Synchron, which I actually thought about playing three copies of Assault Synchron in this deck, then you can all, technically you could actually use the effect of red supernova dragon three times in one turn. Because Assault Synchron has the grave effect that if a dragon synchro monster you control would be attributed or banished, then you can banish this card from your graveyard summon that monster back to the field. And then the last card I play for my extra deck is the one copy of Hot Red Dragon Archfiend King Calamity. King Calamity has the effect that when it's synchro summoned, cards and effects cannot be activated in response to its summoning, or cards and effects can't be activated. And then when it's summoned, you can activate its effect to then be able to negate all card effects your opponent activates on the field. I want to specify the on-the-field part because your opponent can still activate the effects of cards in their hand, in their graveyard, if they're, when they're banished, but they cannot, the only place they cannot activate is on the field. And then King Calamity has the effect that when it destroys a monster at battle, your opponent takes damage with that destroyed monster's attack points. And when King Calamity is destroyed, you special summon a Dark Dragon Synchro monster from your graveyard except for King Calamity. And now I will go ahead and show the two-card combo that gets you to King Calamity. So the two-card combo is Lubellion plus any of the four cards that get you to Soul Resonator. So Soul Resonator, 
uh, Resonator Call, Crimson Gaia, or uh, Earthbound Servant, or Earthbound Prisoner, Stone Sweeper. So what you do is you normal summon the Soul Resonator. Oops. Soul Resonator gets your Bone Archfiend. Then you will discard any cards, so I guess it's technically a three card combo. Summon the Bone Archfiend. Bone Archfiend's effect will activate, sending your crim Crimson Resonator to the graveyard. And if you discard a Crimson Resonator to summon it, then you'll actually send your Vision Resonator. And then you'll either increase or decrease Bone Archfiend or Soul Resonator by one level. Then you'll tune them so you can Synchro Summon your copy of Red Rising Dragon. Red Rising Dragon will then Special Summon Crimson Resonator. Crimson Resonator's effect will activate as long as you don't control another monster. To then Special Summon two more Resonators from your deck. So Red, Ris or Red Resonator and Vision Resonator. And at this point it's optional, but you can activate Red Ris Resonator to target the Red Rising Dragon and gain 2100 life points. Then you will tune the Vision Resonator, or you will tune any of these with the Red Rising Dragon to then summon your Scarred Dragon Archfiend. Then you'll tune Vision with Scarred. I just do those two because I can chain block the Vision Resonator with Scarred Dragon Archfiend. To then make your Beast, beast Deal just er. This is the right thing, right? No, I lied. I'm going back a bit. You want to tune the Red Rising Dragon with Vision Resonator for if you want to summon King Calamity. By tune them, make the Scarred Dragon Archfiend, Vision's effect will activate, getting to your Crimson Gaia. Which, that part isn't the important part as much as then discarding the Lubellion, grabbing Serenir. Serenir will banish your Red Rising Dragon, summon itself, trade them out for Lubellion. And usually you want to have everything in defense if you're going first, because you, er, if your opponent is the same For some reason, my mom's puppy really likes knocking over the fan. So I apologize for that loud sudden noise. But now your Serenir will activate. So if you want to go this route, you can send it to the Branded off of the Serenir. Lubellion will then place your Branded Beast face up. So I apologize for the misdirection from earlier, that is. So now you can place Branded Beast face up, go to your end phase, and get your two to the Branded. And as soon as your opponent draws, a two will tune the Scar Dragon Archfiend with the Crimson Resonator and Red Resonator to then make your King Calamity. And another thing you can do from earlier is Crimson Gaia adds Red Zone. So off of just three cards, this is what you should have. But I honestly, though, the only downside of this is that if your opponent imperms, Veilers, Ve uh, Ash, does if they do anything to the Soul Resonator, this really stops. And when that happens, that is what uh, the Flame King is for. But if you don't have those, you normal summon your Soul Resonator and it gets negated. You can activate Flame Crime, summon it, and then because you have two things, you can activate Flame King's effect to then inflict 800 points of damage to your opponent, but you don't have to because if, if you're really afraid of Ogre, you really don't want to. But what you do here is you then tune them, summon your Red Rising Dragon, uh, chain one Flame Crime, chain two Red Rising. Flame Crime is going to send your Red Ring. Then Red Rising will summon back your Soul Resonator. You tune them to summon your, or out your Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss. And then Red Rain returns to your hand. Then you can set the Red Rain and off of just one card, you have a negate and a board wipe in the form of the Red Rain. But that is it for my Red Dragon Archfiend deck profile. If you have any ideas of what I can do to improve the deck, 
any idea for decks like to see be made in the future or decks like to see face each other. I am currently working on uh, Red Dragon versus Earthbound because that's really the only 5Ds match I can do at the moment because I don't have Blackwing built, but I have to do that. But anyway, if you have any ideas, comment down below. I always read the comments. Thank you for watching.